All right, well, why don't we start with the uh, creamed potatoes and peas, and we can get the potatoes cooking while we do our other stuff. So to start, uh, we need, uh, red potatoes are my favorite for this recipe. And the reason is because they are moister and they hold their shape better once they're cooked. They don't turn to mashed potatoes when you add the cream and try to stir it up. Um, I have made this recipe with white potatoes, but that does fall apart a little bit more and they're a little drier. Um, so I like to especially to do it when the red potatoes go on sale. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when I grab them. <laughs> or uh, especially in the summertime when you get your fresh, uh, like the new potatoes. This is an amazing recipe for the new potatoes uh, because they're nice and small. But I basically just cut the potatoes into bite-sized chunks. Uh, they don't have to be real small. And for this recipe, you want approximately two quarts of potatoes. This is a four quart pot. So for me, that means the pot approximately half full. Um, you don't have to measure exact on those. And what I like to do uh, while I'm chopping my potatoes, I like to get water boiling because that will actually uh, speed up the process for the potatoes. I, you can either get it boiling in the tea kettle or in a separate pot or even put boiling water in the bottom of your pot and just cut the potatoes into a bowl. We have made this a number of times here at the restaurant as our entree and uh, every time I've made it I've always made extra so that way I can be sure and take some leftovers home to my dad. He's never gotten any <laughs> because it never fails. Uh, someone will come in at four o'clock in the afternoon and say I saw you had those cream potatoes on Facebook. Could I buy a quart and take it home? <laughs> and so uh, that's where the leftovers go. <laughs> but uh, last week, we had a, a big enough batch at the cooking class that my dad actually got some and he was very happy. Okay, so we've got our half a pot full of potatoes. We're gonna pour boiling water over the top of them. Now you don't want to put a lot of boiling water, you just want it so the water is just to the top of the potatoes. Um, not over the top, just right to the top. Alright, because all of the water in this pot is going to be used in your cream. You're not going to take any water out of this pot. Uh, so. If you get too much on accident, take it out now before the potatoes are cooked. <laughs> but what else, you guys have the recipe, what else needs to go in this pot besides potatoes and water? There's two other things that go in here. Dehydrated minced onion. Dehydrated minced onion. That is not onion powder. You can see they're nice big pieces of onion. You see that? What does it smell like? Is that what you said? No, it she, like? said she said mine says small onion. Oh, it says or a small onion. If you don't have dehydrated onion, onion, you can use a fresh onion and chop it. But how much minced onion do we need to put in here? Three tablespoons. Three tablespoons? Okay. One, two, three. I told you I was going to show you quick and easy. One of you girls, would you tell me what else goes in this pot besides the minced onion and the water? Potatoes? Salt. Salt? How much? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. All right. You girls sing Christina's special song. Mm. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> We're actually dividing on what This time. is Himalayan pink salt. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Himalayan pink salt? Where do you get it? It looks pink. Himalayan. <laughs> so we're going to stir this in and we're going to put the lid on and let these potatoes cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're all done. And while they're doing that, we'll work on our other recipes. So we're going to put the lid on here and that is going to cook for a while. The, while these are cooking, we are going to make the cream. 
You want to know what is in that cream, in the creamy potatoes and peas that we're eating. So let's see. What's the first ingredient in our cream? It says blend until smooth. It's got a bunch of ingredients below. Soy milk? Mm -mm. Uh -huh. Cashews? How much? Three cups? Mm. Oh, it's here. Three yeah. fourths of a cup. Three fourths of a cup. That's right. You learn mm -hmm. fractions when you're in the kitchen, right. don't you? <laughs> Yeah, three quarters of a cup. So we will take, what I like to do is I take raw cashews, or you can use roasted, but I use the raw and then I rinse them really good because they're dirty when they come. And so I, we're gonna put those in the blender. And what else goes in after the cashews? Two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of salt. Now the reason we have so much salt in this recipe is because potatoes absorb salt. In fact, you've probably heard the, the age-old uh, remedy, if your dish is too salty, throw a potato in it, right? Have you heard that? Yeah, I've heard that. It's because potatoes absorb salt. Is the pink salt not as salty as regular salt? Uh, the pink salt fun. has less sodium really than regular salt, 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 but it actually salt tastes down. saltier. Well. All right, so I've got the two teaspoons of salt. What else? One and a half teaspoons. Hey. Hey. Yeah, we've got that little tea and the big tea again, don't we? All right, so one and a half tablespoons, you said, of cornstarch. Now this is actually an organic non-GMO cornstarch, in case you're wondering. And let's see if we can get a half a tablespoon here. Could we use tapioca starch like that? I, you can use arrowroot powder in place of it. Um, I wouldn't recommend tapioca starch. You could use tapioca granules, but then you have to cook it for a half hour. But arrowroot powder will do a similar. Uh, arrowroot is a little bit more gummy and stringy than uh, cornstarch, but at only one and a half tablespoons, you should be okay. Can you substitute arrowroot for corn and cornstarch interchangeably? In anything that's a sauce, yes. In a pie, no. Uh, arrowroot will make a pie that uh, is not sliceable. <laughs> it will be, it, basically when you stick your spoon in it and take it out, it will stretch. <laughs> Voice of experience. <laughs> Tried making a pie once, it didn't work too well. <laughs> but in sauces, yes, you can use them interchangeably. Okay, and the next thing is what? Three tablespoons of onion powder. I'm glad someone's paying attention. All right, three tablespoons. Okay. What else? One teaspoon of garlic. One teaspoon of garlic powder. You're getting good at this. Garlic. All right, and then what? One cup of water or more if needed to blend, right? So we're gonna do approximately a cup. This is a two cup dish, so it's okay if it's approximate because we're gonna add more if we need to anyway. Now you do not have to have a blender this monstrous to blend this little bit of cashews, okay? <laughs> a small blender, a Walmart blender, any type of blender will work just fine. Uh, you may have to just blend it a little bit longer. But one thing to always make sure, this is your cream. So you, uh, you don't want it to feel like sandpaper between your fingers. You want it to be creamy smooth. So you just have to blend it long enough until it feels smooth between your fingers and that's how you'll know if it's done. So we're gonna make some noise. Yes. All right, let's see if that's smooth enough. Yep, it's smooth between my fingers. So we're good. So that is our cream. We are gonna set that aside until the potatoes are done cooking. 
So what we need is to put the cream into our pot of potatoes. There's a cream goes. And we will add a little bit more water to them too, right? <laughs> so all this cream that we made is going right to the pot of potatoes. And that little bit of cream is what thickens your entire pot of potatoes that you make. And now because I've got a whole bunch of valuable cream in the bottom there, we're going to add a little bit of water to our blender to rinse it out. Because the recipe says to add another how much? Half cup of water, is that what it says? Yeah. Yeah, so we put our half cup of water in the blender to rinse out the blender. And then we're going to add that to this pot right here. And now we're going to stir this. We want to boil this cream in the water for one minute to cook that cornstarch. The nice thing was our water was already boiling, so we got instant start there. You can see it's already thickening. This uh, recipe for cream potatoes and peas, uh, when I was young, sometimes when my mom was in a hurry and didn't want to cook hot cereal and wanted something uh, special, we would have cream potatoes and peas over toast for breakfast. And that was, it's almost like the biscuits and gravy idea. Uh, I just, we did it with toast instead because it was faster. But uh, that was one of my favorite breakfasts as a kid, was cream potatoes and peas. All right, you can see it's already nice and thick now. So we're gonna add our peas. Now these are frozen green peas, uh, and they're still frozen. I didn't even bother thawing them, because we're just gonna dump them into here and they will thaw very quickly. Yeah, we just had cold peas, so that really thickened it, didn't it? <laughs> now if it's too thick, all you have to do is add a little bit of water until it's the right consistency that you want. But if you want it thick, then just leave it. Um, and that's it. It's ready to serve. That didn't take long, did it? It's delicious, too. Yes, it is. And it's amazing. Uh, put it in quart jars and let it seal in the fridge. And it'll keep for several days if you want to warm it up later as leftovers or whatever you want. Uh, quick and easy. And it's amazing.